Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. Well, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. Sadly, Steve Jobs passed away, a man responsible for a lot of the gadgets and computing stuff that I actually cover on this podcast. And, well, he's made a big difference to many of our lives, instigating the whole PC revolution that we would have them in our houses. And he's actually gone on, really. They used to talk about every house having a computer, but really, everyone now has a phone in their pocket, a computer in their pocket, really. These smartphones and iPads are simply very advanced and very small computers. So with this, the other thing that has happened in the past couple of weeks is they've brought out iOS 5, which is for the iPad and for the iPhone, and also the iPhone 4S, which is a very fast version of the iPhone 4. Seems to be about double the speed I've been using. It seems very fast. And it has the voice recognition Siri, which is actually a little bit useful as well, which I'm going to show you as well. So what is it about the iOS 5 that makes it good? Well, they've added in a number of new features. And one of the things that's really key with this, and it works with Lion as well, which is the Mac operating system, is iCloud. Now, iCloud is where all of your information is stored on the internet. It's also stored on the device, and the device being an iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad, and your computer. And basically what happens, just to give you an example, I save an appointment on my phone and it'll appear elsewhere, it's stored on the internet and it can appear then on my iPad and also on my computer as well. I can go to the internet and look up those contacts as well and also those appointments. But it also does the same with documents. So if you're using things like Pages, Numbers or Keynote, which is the Apple versions of Word, Excel and PowerPoint, it saves those as well so you can collaborate, use it on any device. But one thing that is really useful is if you take a photograph on your iPhone or on your iPad 2, it goes to what's known as a photo stream and it stores that online. And where this is useful is it puts it straight on the internet. And then when you open up any of your devices and with Lion you need the new version of iPhoto, you suddenly see it magically appear. So it goes up to the internet and comes straight down. And the way that it works is your photo is stored on the internet for 30 days and it will store up to a thousand photos. Anything over a thousand, it keeps the newest ones and the other ones go. So where this is handy, you've taken a photograph, you know it's gonna get backed up. And you say 30 days, a thousand photos, that's not very much. But the chances are, well, one, it's on your device anyway, the original one that you took it on, but it will then appear on the others. And let's face it, are you gonna turn on any of your other devices in 30 days or before you've had a thousand photos? Probably yes. And I have to say it's fantastic. I've been trying it out. I've had this for a few weeks now. And I've got to tell you, it works really well. I take a photo on this. Next thing I know, it's on my iPad. How fantastic is that? And I've tried that on iPhoto as well. I have to look into doing this on a PC too, but I'm sure it works well there too. So I'm going to show you now some of the things that they've done with iOS 5. So let's just take a closer look at that. So one of the things that I really like is you can get quickly to the camera and you can do that just by pressing, double pressing the home button here. There's the camera icon. You just tap on it and you're straight into the camera. You'll see that if I pick it up now, okay, all you can see is the desk here, but you've got this button here for taking photos, which you're used to, but you can now use this button here as the shutter release, just like a camera. So that's the volume up. So if I was holding it like that, you can see it and I could just simply take it. And okay, not very interesting, it's the desk, but that works. Just in case you're wondering, if I press my home button again, and it just takes me back to my lock screen here. So if you've got a passcode, it doesn't override that. People can't get in your phone to see other things. So in iOS 5, they've now introduced something called iMessage, which is like texting. And you can text from an iPad now to an iPhone and back again, and also from another iPhone to another iPhone. And where this is good is you now can do this over Wi-Fi or 3G, so it's not eating into your text allowance, although so many of us have got huge text allowance, but it now does work for the iPad as well, which is just great. So does FaceTime, that works on the iPhone and also the iPad. But the other place that iMessaging could be good, and you basically just text as if you're doing normal texting. So this is great, let me just show you how this works. But before I do, I just want to tell you another reason this is good, is if you're texting someone overseas where the call charges, or rather the text charges might be high, or you're overseas and you're texting back to home, you now can do that over Wi-Fi, 
no charges, except for whatever Wi-Fi you've got, which you may have already paid for if you're staying in a hotel or at a Starbucks where you might be getting free Wi-Fi. So iMessage is good. And you can see here, it's just like sending a normal text. Let me just show you. And as I said to you, that works over Wi-Fi or 3G. I just go into messages, same as before. It's saying text message. If it had a connection at the other end, if I was to send one and if I just said test, I just press send and it will go using the iMessage. If it is an iMessage at the other end, you do actually get to see that it's delivered. A little message comes up saying it's delivered. So that's the text messaging. The other things that are useful here are location-based options such as using reminders and also the weather. So if I tap on the weather here, you'll see it's actually picking up the local weather. It knows that because if I go into the settings, I can actually choose location services, which are on, and you'll see each application that can use it has the option to switch it on and off. And if I go down here, you'll see that I've actually got, further down, I've got the weather, and that's switched on, so that's how it knows that I'm in London. So it's as simple as doing that. Other things that I can do here is that I can actually also go to reminders, and what you'll see here is that it's picked up the reminders, but I'm going to add in a new one and just quickly show you how you can do that as a location-based one, because as I said, you don't always want everything to be based on time. So if I go into it, you can see the test. Remind me, I can do it on a particular day at a location. On a day is like doing it with the calendar. Switch on the at a location. It's worked out where I am. I can do it when I leave, when I arrive. I can choose a location if it's not the current one that I'm at. I can choose address and you do need this in your address book. I can choose that. I can then, if it has got more than one address, I can choose an address and I can simply use that one. So you can see that's really easy to do. Go back to remind me, say done. And I can tell you I've been using this and it's fantastic. It does really trigger when you get near or when you leave that location. It's not exact pinpoint accurate, but it's pretty close. Okay, so that's the reminders there. Notifications have changed a bit on this, and you can go and set that up in your settings. You can get it to notify you when emails come in, SMSs, and a number of other things as well. And it's really good, and it pops up on your lock screen, and you can also pull down from the top. And let me just quickly show you how that works. And you go into settings, there's notifications, and you can tell it which ones you actually want to have notifications on. So if I was to choose my reminders, you'll see the notification center is on, and what that is, is that if I drag down from the top, you can actually see what I've got switched on here. So you can see I've got weather, I've got reminders, I've got things in my calendar, and I've also got things on email as well. And I can simply go to any of these really quickly by tapping there, and it takes me straight to that calendar as well. So if I go to the settings, that is in the notification center, that's actually switched on. Show the last five items for the reminders. I can have them come up as banners, which come up across the top, or the alerts is the way that we used to have them on iOS 5, when well, I say used to, the traditional way. And you can actually see these in the lock screen. So all you have to do is hit the power button or the home button and you'll see a listing of whatever you've chosen to appear there, which comes up a little bit like this, but you don't see the weather and things like that there. And to get rid of it, you can just move it back. So that's how you can set the notifications. So very handy stuff. So now I'm going to show you Siri, and just so that you know a lot of the features of if it's going to look up things on the maps don't work unless you're in the US. So Siri is the voice recognition that they've got in here. It's really quite useful. All you have to do is hold down this button here. What's today's date? It's Monday the 17th of October 2011. Okay, so I probably knew that, but just to show you just how useful it is. If you've got the headphones that came with this, there is also a little microphone button that has a plus or minus for the volume. If you hold it down in the center, it's the same as holding down this button here. So if you're driving and you want to do that, you want to know what's the time, what's the time? It's 18.23. So very useful, but you'll see there's actually more that you can do here. You can have a bit of fun with it as well. So thank you. My pleasure, as always. Well done.
glad to be of help. How are you today? I am well. So it comes up with different things. That's just a bit of fun. But other things that you could do is I could say, send text message. To whom shall I send it? I need a contact name, phone number or email address. Gary Schwartz. Okay, I can send a text to Gary Schwartz for you. What would you like it to say? This is a message from my iPhone. I updated your message. Ready to send it? Send. Okay, I'll send your message. It should come up here somewhere. I can also do things like make an appointment. Make an appointment for tomorrow at 10 a.m. I didn't find any appointments for tomorrow at 10 a.m. about make an appointment. Shall I create it? Yes. Okay, here's your meeting. Note that you already have two appointments that overlap with this. Shall I schedule this anyway? Yes. I put it on your calendar for tomorrow. So you can see it's really useful. I can do this with emails. I can create a note. Here's what I found. Ah, didn't do the great job there. Hang on, let me just clear that. Create a note. Take that note for you. Just tell me what you wanted to say. Here is a recipe for making great burgers, but that's top secret. Here's your note. And then I could tap on it and go in and edit it. So you can see it's really quite useful. You can try out loads and loads of different things here. If you come across something really useful, drop me a line and I'll include it in a podcast and mention that you gave me the idea. But if I wanted to search on Safari, for example, search for iPhone 4. Searching for iPhone 4. And you see, it's taken me straight to Google and it's done a search. I've got to say that's quicker than typing it in. Thanks for watching. Please do drop me a line via the website. If you've got any questions, just go to www.jargonfreehelp.com and I'll try and answer them in these podcasts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Don't forget, jargon-free help is more than just technology.